If you need to control it or measure it, Stromquist & Company has a control solution for you. With over $2 million of inventory between our Georgia and Florida locations, an easy-to-use online ordering platform, same-day shipping, and a factory-trained team of controls experts to answer your questions, Stromquist & Company continues in its tradition of offering great service and great products. Um, from there, that's where you would set up an account if you're a customer of ours and you can order online. You can look at um, cut sheets, you can look at um, everything you know, business related for, for Stromquist and, and you know, basically everything you would want to see. Um, one of the neat things about it is if we give you guys a quote, you can go to the literature section of that website and pop in the quote number or the order number and it's going to bring you back um, all the cut sheets for everything that's on that quote or order. So saving you guys a ton of time of trying to uh, either call us and ask us for it or having to go research it yourself. So utilize the tools that are on there. Um, just by a quick show of hands, who's heard of controltrends.com? It's about three or four of you. Um, controltrends.com is a, for the most part, Stromquist run website. Um, we started it, but it's more um, geared towards people like you guys posting to it, asking questions, that type of stuff. So we kind of create the forum. It's up to you guys to go in and, and, and use it. But essentially what it is, it's an information website. Um, so you can go on there and we'll post a video one day of a how-to of how to calibrate a pneumatic thermostat. And then the next day it's a full-blown programming of uh, you know, some type of DDC controller or something like that. Um, industry news, you know, anything that's on there, you guys can go on, post comments, ask for certain things that you want to see. Um, it's a really, really neat thing. It's coming and it's, uh, it's growing, I guess I should say, you know, more than anything else. So if you haven't been to either one of those, definitely if you're a customer of Stromquist, um, you, need to, you need to be at Stromquist.com and um, you, know, you or anybody that's in the industry needs to be on controltrends.com as well too. Um, the, uh, we're supposed to have about 30 people in here. I don't think we're going to quite get to that, but we'll probably have some people trickling in, so I apologize for that. Um, quick show of hands. Um, how many people here are contractors looking to learn more about DDC? Contractors or building managers or something like that? Just raise your hands. Okay. How many are end users that are looking to have it installed in your building or you want to look at it from, from that aspect? Some of the same people. Who in here is by a big show of hands, who in here has absolutely zero knowledge of, of DDC whatsoever? Great, good, okay, good. You're in the right place. Um, basically, you know, what we're gonna cover is um, the purpose of the class is to offer a ground up approach to the fundamentals of DDC. I'm gonna explain this, but this is to start at step one rather than step four or five. This is a complex, um, DDC is forever changing. It's kind of like when you buy that new laptop and then two weeks later you find out that it's obsolete and there's something else that's better. DDC is the same way. It's constantly changing and evolving and getting better. Um, you'll never ever get to a point where you've come close to learning at all. Um, when you get someone that's an expert with this stuff that works with it every single day and they're trying to tell you and you have a basic understanding of, of what it is they're trying to tell you, it's nearly impossible to pick it up quickly. Um, I fought that fight for a super long time. You know, people just couldn't get it down to a basic enough level for me to understand it. Um, so my goal today is, I hope it won't be review or remedial for, for any of you guys. And um, you know, at worst case scenario, just a few, but I am gonna go to a very basic level to make sure you have that you know, fundamental approach to be able to understand and build from there. So that's, that's the goal of this class. If you're a programming wizard and you're you know, you know what DDC stands for and how to spell it and all that kind of good stuff. This is probably not the class for you guys. Um, but I think that everyone's going to be able to learn a little bit of something from this. Um, and basically, I just said, you know, to give you a very basic understanding. <clears throat> what we're going to cover, um, an overview of digital controls, basic terminology, devices, how they communicate across the network. We're going to talk about communication protocols a few different types of hardware, and benefits to an end user and contractor. Um, 
All right, it's time to put some people on the spot. Who wants to take a shot at what DDC stands for? That guy? You're getting pointed out. <laughs> yep, you got it. Direct digital control. All right. Um, when this little gadget pops up, this is a term. Um, I'm going to have a list of all the terms for you guys, so don't, again, worry about taking notes. Um, but this is just something that you're probably going to want to pay attention to. Um, so direct digital control, the most widely used definition is um, the automated control of a condition or process by digital device. Um, what I like to add to this is that it will also communicate. If you're going with just the first two, as I spoke about earlier, with this stuff constantly evolving and changing, there's going to be a lot of things that you're going to find that are going to kind of meet that first two cri criteria of automated and digital device, but they're not going to meet the communicating part of it. And in reality, if you don't have that last piece, if you're not communicating and you're not able to pull it up onto a front end, you're really not doing DDC. You are, but you aren't. You know, it's, 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 it's widely different. So basically automated, you know what that means? Digital device, all we mean by that is that, you know, it's, it's like a computer. So what's in these boxes, there's no, there's no moving parts. It's just, it's a, it's a chip in there and it's getting signals and sending out signals and translating and that kind of stuff. You know, there's no, nothing in there moving around. So that's what makes it a digital device. <clears throat> um, once you meet these three criteria, you're, you're at that point doing automation. Um, automation and DDC are the same thing. You can kind of interchange those. Um, you really, in a sense, you can you can have one without the other, but they obviously they work they work well. Automation is basically the big picture, and DDC is what you use to create automation. BAS. Who wants to take a shot at that? I think I heard it. Building automation system. It's a computerized intelligent network of electronic devices designed to monitor and control HVAC, mechanical electronics, and lighting systems in a building. So essentially, you're going to put DDC in a building, you're thus creating a building automation system or a BAS. <clears throat> All right, so why do you want to do it? First thing, it lowers your utility costs. On average, you put it into a 100,000 square foot building, you're going to save about 15% usually a little more, sometimes a little less, but depending on how it's put in and, and the person installed it for you, um, you're gonna save somewhere around 15%. Um, that's huge. That's, that's good for the contractor trying to sell the job, and it's also huge for the person thinking about taking on the job. You know, when you get, when you get that kind of return on your investment, um, you know, that's, that's obviously a good thing. All right, increased productivity. This one's always funny, but with buildings these days, um, if there's not a great logic of control in that building, um, you're gonna get more or less outside air than what you need in that building, or you're going to not circulate the building properly. With a good DDC system, you can have all of that, and by increasing productivity, that just means you're gonna have fewer sick days for your employees. Um, the, the building is going to be a cleaner building, not a sick building. Um, there's some, you can't put a dollar on that. You know, you get a high priced employee that just can't come to work. I mean, obviously it's not going to make everybody never get sick, but you get my, you get my point. It, it helps out. Um, occupant complaints. We're going to get into this a little bit more later. Um, but when you set up a system like this, you get something called a front end. And I'm going to go way more in depth with that in a little bit. But the front end is basically a way to see um, everything that's going on in your building. If the air in here cut off right now, you guys wouldn't notice it for at least five or 10 minutes. It's a small room. Um, but you probably wouldn't feel like you needed to complain or you knew for sure that something was wrong for probably a good 45 minutes to an hour. On the front end, that person is gonna get an alarm or an email or a flashing light in front of them or something that says, hey, the air in the training room is out. And before you guys can even feel that the, the air in the room is out, they're already in there trying to fix whatever the problem is. Um, that's huge. That works, out, that works out really good for everybody. Um, reduces maintenance cost. You can do your programming so that you're going to have 
most, most systems are set up to run at 100%. Air comes on, boom, blows at 100%, it stops, 100% off. Um, you know, you, there's no limiting. There's no, well, you only need 60% of it to cool the room off. With DDC, you can run your program that way, you know, demand limit controls, that kind of stuff. And you're actually gonna have the equipment in your building run for a lot longer, get more life out of it because it's gonna be running in a more proficient manner. Simplifies building operation, maintains measured comfort, um, just meaning that you know, it's going to control better. <clears throat> the most important reason why, it's a great investment. As we kind of touched on earlier, 15% savings on average, it's gonna pay for itself, most cases, in less than two years. There's not much out there that does that. And that's the initial kind of window that everybody's gonna use is two years. And even a lot more cases than two years, you're gonna see you know, in 18 months or something like that um, payback. It's really not too difficult to, to make it make sense to somebody that wants to sell it or wants to use it you know, in a building. Um, I can sit up here and tell you that I'm six foot four and 185 pounds and I can run a 40 speed passer than Adrian Peterson, but we all know that would be a lie. So. I think that it's important I tell you, you know, how we're gonna do that, how we're gonna accomplish all that stuff. Um, I've, I've hit on most of it, but basically, um, with the controls that you're gonna get in the building, they're, they're way more advanced than what you're gonna see in just a normal system. Um, they're gonna do things that, that other things can't. Um, coordinating equipment, we spoke about that. Graphical operation, we touched on that. Your front end is gonna consist of whatever graphics that you wanna pull into it. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you some examples of that later, but you can see every single thing that there is to, to you can just overload yourself with, with data. And some people do. Some people pull every single point into their front end and they try and look at it and they realize they don't need all this and they, they back off and get to the, you know, the important stuff that they wanna monitor. Um, outside air optimization, we talked about that. Scheduling, it's really cool. A lot of times, you know, you're gonna see where in a building on average, you're only using it about 70% of the time. Somebody's out of their office or not here for the day or we're not in the training room or something like that. And think about if you have motion sensors or um, you know, a, a schedule that you're writing for occupied, unoccupied in a room, you're not gonna be heating or cooling that room, you're saving energy. That's where the, that's where the savings come in. Um, you can have it to where that you could have a reset on your lighting in your office. So someone walks into their office and motion sensor turns the lights on and they go to work and they leave. And uh, you know, if they're not in there moving around for 10 minutes, the lights shut off. So it's on and on. So you're, you know, you're saving a ton of money. Um, smarter control, we talked about that. 